So Navier-Stokes equation uh, usually have a mass conservation equation uh, and a momentum equation and an energy equation. So mass, uh, mass conservation equation is a single equation and momentum equation is uh, a vector equation which means it has three components and the uh, energy equation is again it's a scalar equation uh, so total five equations uh, which you which you are supposed to know uh, you should already know how to derive it but i'll just uh, talk about it anyway To start with, uh, first mass conservation equation. We know that uh, mass cannot be generated, uh, so rate of increase of mass in a fluid element must be equal to net rate of flow of mass into the element. rate of increase must be equal to net rate of flow rate of flow of mass into the fluid element. So let's consider a fluid element with uh, uh, thickness delta x, delta y and delta z. So rho u will be the uh, rate with which uh, mass enter the fluid element in the one direction. So here it's a uh, velocities as, uh, are uh, represented as u, v and w u is x velocity, v is y velocity, w is z velocity. So from each phase, uh, so the middle point is x, y, z. So the rho u uh, minus rho u uh, dou rho u dou x into half delta x will be the uh, rate with which Maka uh, centers the left side. And this will be the rate with uh, rate with which mass leaves the, uh, the right face there. S similar thing can be written on the other sides also. This is something you can clearly understand. Rho u is uh, velocity, right? Velocity is uh, distance, I mean displacement divided by time. So if you, uh, the, the rate 
this is a unit volume uh, not unit volume uh, the volume with uh, length width and thickness delta uh, delta x delta y and delta z so the total rate of flow uh, divided by the corresponding area that will be this equation the rate of mass flow into the element so if you simply add up these co co components you just uh, uh, add up means the rate of increase of mass in fluid element will be equal to net rate of flow so which means uh, the total sum of all these components should be the rate of mass into the uh, fluid element across boundaries so let's try to join If you do that, you'll uh, get the mass conservation equation, which is which is something you already know. What is mass conservation equation? Tau rho dot T plus dou Vx dou X plus dou rho Y dou Y plus rho dou V Z dou Z will be equal to zero. Uh, here the components are written as u, v and w and I am using vx, vy and vz. I think this is uh, better for uh, clearly understanding the corresponding direction of velocity. That's the reason why I used vx, vy and vz. So you need to understand that. And this can be written in a compact vector notation. Uh, how do we do that? This will be equal to del dot rho v so what is del operator here again these are the things you are familiar with and you, and you will just uh, write them down So this is the del operator i dot do x plus uh, j dot do y plus k dot do z and what is v here
VXI plus VYK plus V sorry So if you take the dot product of it, uh, you will get this equation. Del dot i, uh, if you find dot product of i with j, it will be 0, i with k, it will be 0, but i with i will be 1. So do, do do x of do, uh, do v x by do x, do v y by do y, do v z by do z is equal to 0. So this is the uh, vector notation of the mass conservation equation. So for an incompressible fluid, so if the fluid is incompressible, uh, rho will not change with respect to time. Which means uh, del dot v is equal to 0. Rho will not change, this uh, component will be 0 and you can uh, divide the entire equation with the rho and you will get del dot v is equal to 0. So again if, if you just uh, expand it the same way, uh, you will get uh, dou v x by dou x plus dou v y by dou y plus dou v z by dou z equal to 0. That is the uh, very same notation. Now let us uh, leave it here and talk about something very important here. This is an equation we usually, this is a concept we need to, uh, this is very commonly used in uh, CFD and So usually the derivative we use is uh, spatial derivative. So in the previous equation you have seen that uh, for example here dou rho dou t is rate of change of density with respect to time at a certain point in space uh, with respect to time. So there is another concept called rate of change of uh, rate of change following a fluid particles which means if fluid particle will usually be moving so rate of change of a property in the fluid particle with respect to time will be considered along with that the change of a uh, rate of change of fluid particle rate of change of a property in a fluid particle with respect to space will also be uh, considered this is called rate of change following a uh, this is the term we usually use rate of change following a fluid particle uh, or there are actually several terms there are uh, there is this term called uh, I'll write down simply all the terms it's also called total derivative sometime it's called uh, uh, material derivative advective derivative
these are all the common names for this uh, rate of change following a fluid particle you don't need to you, you, i'll just write out this uh, so that if you see a different term somewhere else you can understand what it is again der derivative following a motion that is also there derivative following motion it's also there uh, lagrangian derivative a uh, particle derivative another term substantive derivative another term you will not get confused with all these names actually there are only two types of derivatives we will be talking about here uh, one is a spatial derivative and almost all names every other name will usually correspond to this total derivative or material derivative uh, lagrangian derivative this is uh, so we will usually use the term called total derivative probably uh, or it's highly likely that I'll be using other names because these are all most of these are all very commonly used uh, by different people in different textbooks and all. And that is represented by let's say a, a property per unit mass. Let's say phi is a property. per unit mass in a fluid so the total derivative is written as capital d phi dt so the spatial derivative is usually written with a small letter d and we write the total derivative or material derivative is written as written with capital letter T so d phi dt so this is mathematically uh, uh, speaking the total derivative itself which means uh, we know that uh, phi depends on uh, space and time so what will be the different components here dou phi dou t which is our uh, regular spatial derivative plus now we have to consider uh, change with respect to space which means dou phi dou x into dx dt plus dou phi dou y into dy dt plus dou phi dou z into d z dt so this is the rate of change with respect to time and this is the rate of change with respect to x direction this is the rate of change of phi per unit mass in the y direction z direction so this is the uh, this is now the total derivative Now this this can also be written in a short way, right? D, dx dt is nothing but velocity, velocity in x direction. dy dt is nothing but velocity in y direction. Uh, so this can be written as dou phi dou t plus dou phi dou x dou v x plus dou phi dou y dou v y v y. <coughs> plus dou phi dou z dou v z 
this can be uh, further reduced using uh, vector notation this is the dot product of uh, velocity vector and grad phi this is v dot del phi V dot del phi. And why is that? Because V is nothing but Vx plus Vy plus Vz multiplied by I dot O X, I dot O Y, I dot O Z. Multiply it out, you will get the equation. Straightforward. So, this is the uh, form in which you can write. Uh, uh, material derivative. Now that is a, a dou phi dou t is a rate of change per unit mass. So you can uh, write uh, rate of change per uh, unit volume. For that you need to multiply the equation with to multiply the equation with density. Density is mass by volume, right? So if you have an equation with uh, equation per unit mass, and if you multiply it with mass by volume, you will get the uh, equation per unit volume. So uh, d phi dt will be equal to rho. Uh, same thing, do phi do t spatial derivative plus v dot v vector dot grad phi so this is again uh, the total derivative we talked about and uh, there is a there is another way we can write the same thing uh, so the mass conservation equation was what was the mass conservation equation toro do t plus uh, del dot rho v. So this is the mass conservation equation, right? Toro rho dot plus del dot rho v. So uh, this is because the total mass mass cannot be generated. So, this uh, term should be equal to 0. But this is not true about an arbitrary property. The arbitrary property phi, if it is not mass, if it is just an arbitrary property, it can actually be generated. Uh, so, an arbitrary con conserved property phi if you use uh, instead of mass an arbitrary conserved property that will not be equal to 0 and that term will be equal to 
so i'll simply replace the uh, density term with what is density is mass divided by volume so this density is mass per unit volume so we replace the property mass with r an arbitrary conserved property called phi so here rho is replaced with uh, rho phi del dot here also rho will be uh, replaced with rho phi this will not be zero this is zero because mass cannot be generated uh, so the uh, this will be the uh, conservation equation for an arbitrary property let's see what it is if you multiply it out uh what will you get So I have written the same thing here, but I simply expanded it. Here, this term do rho phi do t will become uh, if you multiply it out rho do phi do t plus phi do rho do t. So these two terms are nothing but uh, this term expanded. Del dot rho phi v will be equal to del dot rho del dot rho v into phi del dot rho v into phi plus uh, rho into uh, v dot del phi v dot del phi rho v del dot phi okay here phi is taken out del uh, phi into del dot rho v and here rho v is taken out rho v dot del phi now this is nothing but uh, uh, mass conservation equation this part so that should be equal to zero mass cannot be generated so which means this is equal to rho do phi do, do phi do t plus v dot del phi and what it is rho this is actually the same thing right rho do phi do t plus v dot del phi and what is that rate of change of uh, rate of change per unit volume so that is equal to rho d phi dt so here i will write lagrange derivative otherwise uh, otherwise get confused. this is not usual derivative that is lagrange derivative so this term which is a conservation of arbitrary property phi is it's the term seems to be equal to material derivative and, and that is a uh, uh, logically correct also so rho uh, do rho phi uh, do t is nothing but rate of increase of phi for a fluid element
This is the usual derivative, spatial derivative, rate of increase of phi for a fluid element. And what is this quantity? Del dot is divergence. Divergence means net rate of flow out of a fluid element. which is equal to our material derivative. So what is material derivative? Rate of increase of phi uh, for a fluid particle, right? We will follow a fluid particle. So the rate of increase of phi for a fluid element which is our common spatial derivative plus divergence of uh, rho phi v which means that net rate of flow uh, net rate of flow of phi out of the fluid element should be equal to the material derivative which means rate of uh, increase of phi for a fluid particle. Now this, uh, this is a general equation for an arbitrary property phi and you can replace the arbitrary property phi with any other, uh, uh, any other property. So for example, uh, phi is an arbitrary property, right? So if uh, phi phi is just uh, considered as a x momentum what is x momentum x momentum is a Uh, rho multiplied by u density multiplied by uh, velocity by mass into velocity is momentum so per unit volume it will become uh, mass by volume will become density that's why density into velocity So if you choose phi is equal to x momentum, uh, you will get the conservation equation for uh, x momentum. So the property we have chosen here is uh, nothing but u, I mean just the, just the, sorry, just the x velocity. So rho dvx dt should be equal to the equation we have just uh, derived which is do rho vx by do t plus divergence del dot rho vx to be vector. So for y momentum, same thing can be written as material derivative uh, is equal to to rho v y. dot t plus del dot 
rho v y v. So same thing can be uh, written for uh, set momentum. So here phi is equal to v x. So if we consider phi is equal to uh, energy E, same thing will be written as rho d dt equal to to rho e do t plus del dot so the same uh, same uh, phi will be replaced by e right rho e v so this is the uh, conservation of energy So we have uh, so far discussed uh, uh, it's 11 o'clock I think, right? Uh, we are uh, yet to derive the equation, actual Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, so we have talked about mass conservation equation and uh, uh, the concept called material derivative. So why did we talk about the material derivative? Because we would like to uh, divide, uh, derive the Navier-Stokes equation and we would like to write uh, the net force on a fluid particle. So to find the momentum equation we, we, we have to come up with the uh, force balance equation for a fluid particle. So the total sum of force on a fluid particle is actually equal to rate of increase of momentum for a fluid particle. So that's the reason why we have uh, derived, uh, we have uh, talked about the idea of total derivative. So to to write the momentum equation, it is nothing but so the, it's, it's nothing but Newton and second law. Second law, what does the second law says? That force is equal to mass into acceleration or rate of change of uh, momentum. So we have a uh, so the rate of increase of uh, momentum momentum of a fluid particle will be equal to sum of forces of the fluid particle. So usually, uh, so what are the different types of forces you can have on a fluid element? You can have uh, surface forces. What are the surface forces? Uh, force due to pressure, pressure force which is the uh, normal component of the stress, viscous force which happens due to viscosity and no gravity, no, 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 gravity is a body force. And you can also have 
different type of body forces this can be due to gravity or uh, you know any centrifugal force or forces like that these are the extra forces we will consider but uh, our, our equation will mostly have these uh, pressure forces and viscous forces so to derive it i'll, I'll not uh, again i'll not write down the uh, okay <coughs> So these are the uh, viscous forces uh, over the uh, uh, fluid particle. Not only viscous fo forces, pressure for pressure and viscous forces. So in each side you have uh, normal stresses and two components of shear stress. So these things are uh, tau xx is a uh, force in x direction in the plane perpendicular to x axis. So that is nothing but pressure. Similarly tau zz uh, same thing opposite side tau xx tau zz. These are all tau yy. Uh, you will see that tau yy here also. So tau yy in the opposite side, tau xx in the opposite side, tau z in the opposite side. These are pressure forces. Then others are uh, shear stresses, which means you have two different uh, components. Tau zy is the shear force in z direction acting on the plane perpendicular to y axis similarly uh, for all other phases so what will be the force resulting from force because of each of these stresses on the side that will be equal to uh, how do you get force from force from stress stress is force per unit area so force is equal to stress multiplied by area Right, the force multiplied by the product of uh, stress and area. And that can be written as, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll not write the entire equation, it's just. Uh, These are the stress components. So we will have uh, three moment of equation. X, uh, I mean, uh, X, moment of equation x direction, y direction, and z direction. So if you write down the uh, moment of equation in x direction. We need to consider all the components, uh, all the force components in 
x direction. So here tau xx, uh, tau zx, uh, tau zx on the other, other side, uh, tau xx. So everything on the, only forces on the x direction is considered here. Others are uh, not written here. So that multiplied by rate of change. Uh, so for example, if you take this side tau xx multiplied by rate of change in x direction multiplied by area. Why, why do you have delta x only here? This is because you will see that in the equation, net equation, you have to uh, multiply it with the total volume of the particle uh, delta x, delta y, delta z. When you multiply it out, uh, you will get the total equation as stress into area, stress multiplied by corresponding area. So this can be written uh, uh, so this is a uh, total force per unit volume so I'll not write down this total sum I'll not try to add individual sum just write down the total force uh, per unit volume uh, in x direction. If you simply add them up, there is nothing here. Simply add all of these up, you will get that uh, the total equation, <coughs> the total force. Uh, per unit volume okay per unit volume as minus p what is p p is nothing but tau xx tau xx equal to tau yy equal to tau zz equal to p so all these normal stresses are uh, p All these normal stresses are in addition to P, not equal to P. P will also be there. Okay, let's not consider this right now. This is actually uh, okay. Uh, so the let's uh, for the time being let's consider it as normal stresses in themselves. There also we have a okay. So I'll just write uh, along with pressure. Actually, pressure will also be there. Pressure will be considered as a different term. We will simply add it up with tau xx. We will not include pressure in tau xx. Doto uh, yx by this is the total force per unit volume in x direction. Something you get if you simply add these equations up.
So you, similar uh, equation can be written in for uh, in other direction. So you, you just need to replace a, uh, uh, the force. You just need to find out the force per unit volume for uh, other di uh, direction y and z. Just the way we have found out it for x direction. And we will see that. And that net force is equal to what? Uh, the material derivative uh, do rho dv dt so the Cauchy's uh, momentum equation will be written as rho dv dt This is nothing but material derivative. And V includes V vector, Vx, Vy, and Vz. It's all directions are considered. This will we'll get as I'll just write down first and explain sec later. This is del P plus del dot to plus G vector. Here the G vector represent body forces. This one represent pressure forces, inward pressure forces. This one represent viscous forces. This word body force. Now, how how is this equal to C? If you write down this equation, and if you write out the same equation in all direction, y and z, this is nothing but the combination of all those equations. But how? Because uh, on the left side. Uh, you have the material derivative. And here minus uh, del v dou dou x will be here, dou dou x of p will be here. Same thing can be written in the other direction. So, in, uh, in general, that will be del minus p plus. Uh, should I write it out? I think I'll write it out. So what will be, for example, what will be del dot, uh, I'll just write this term here, del dot tau will be equal to, let's do it or what, del dot tau will be equal to, uh, so del is i dot o x plus i dot o y plus i tau dot z. Multiply with the uh, shear terms. This will be equal to do do x x do x plus do do y x do y plus do to Zx to Z. This will be the first term. The second term will be do to uh, xy 
डो एक्स प्लस डो टो वाई वाई डो वाई प्लस डो टो सेड वाई टो सेड तो टोटल विल बी डो टो एक्स सेड सेड डायरेक्शन प्लस डो टो वाई सेड डो वाई प्लस डो टो सेड सेड टू टो सेड दिस इज डेल डॉट टो सी यू सी दैट दिस इज basically equal to this see do to y x if you see in x direction you have do to y x by do y plus do to z x uh, by do z do to x x by do x that same thing can be seen here exact same thing plus do to x of p which is here grad p so this is a uh, cauchy's momentum equation is nothing but the uh, all three uh, uh momentum equations combined so now we are going to get to do uh we'll write the constitutive equation for the stress What is stress constitutive equation? I don't know if you are familiar with this, but you definitely know this. But this format may not be familiar. The stress is equal to a constant multiplied by del dot v. What is del dot v? Do v x do x. Plus do v by do y plus do v set do set. That is uh, that will be a scalar multiplied with an identity identity tensor to get uh, a tensor because uh, stress is a tensor. And so this is no not the entire term. So this is the uh, rate of expansion. So a constant multiplied by rate of expansion. Uh, so in all three directions considered, plus. mu into grad v so del v plus del v transpose and how do you get this this part this part can also be written as 2 mu epsilon where epsilon will be considered as strain weight tensor i uh, took me the terms here i'll explain the strain weight tensor is equal to uh Uh, this is something you learned in fluid mechanics the stress is equal to see the simplest form is uh, tau xx is equal to mu into uh, strain rate is something you uh, so is one of the most basic equations uh, 
fluid mechanics right this is simply the generalization of the whole thing so the uh, diagonal terms uh, will be do vx so if you take epsilon equal to do vx do x okay uh, <coughs> dou vx dou x and you will get tau is equal to mu into uh, tau is equal to constant multiplied by dou vx dou x which is uh, strain rate uh, uh, the velocity gradient velocity gradient in x direction so velocity gradient multiplied by a constant is equal to the stress that's the uh, one of the most basic equation fluid mechanics so this is nothing but uh, a generalization of the uh, uh, generalization of the equation so how, how why do you have two here grad v del v plus del v transpose so there will be two terms in the diagonal dou v x dou x plus dou vx plus dou vx dou x so to cancel out uh, two of those uh, uh, two terms we will use uh, half there right to vx so should i write out the whole equation to v it is better to write uh, each so grad v is equal to do to vx do x do vx do y do vx do z do v y do x do v y do z do v y do v z do x do v z do y do v z do z so this is uh, nothing but del v right this is del v if i write uh, del v plus del v transpose transpose means trans transpose of this i will not write it down this is very difficult transpose of this term will be equal to what so diagonal will not change that will be uh, two So to get rid of these two, we are multiplying here with two. The strain rate tensor we are taking out two to get rid of these two. So two do v x do x will be the first term. Second term will be do v x do y plus. Transpose term dou v y dou x plus dou v y dou x. Similarly, this term will be dou v x dou z plus transpose uh, in the trans. When you take the transpose, this will come. So same thing. Dou v z uh, dou x. 
that here you will have dou v y dou x plus dou v x dou y actually same thing here you will get 2 dou v y dou y uh, here you will get uh, dou v y dou z here plus dou v z dou y here to dou v uh, dou, dou v z dou x plus dou v x dou z return the whole equation dou v z dou y plus dou v y dou z the last uh, dou v z dou x two times dou v z dou z See, this is the sum of these two equations. If you take 2 out of it, you will get strain rate. That's, that's the reason why 2 is not written here. If you take 2 out, uh, 2 dou v dou x, 2 dou v x dou x will become uh, 2. So that multiplied by uh, dou v, uh, the, the gradient, the velocity gradient multiplied by viscosity is equal to stress right so the strain rate tensor will not have this 2 it will to be taken out from everywhere so this will become half into dou vx dou y plus so the same thing so that is the uh, stress constitutive equation we will we'll find the we'll, what we'll do is that we'll take the trace of the uh, trace of the whole equation we'll take the trace of the stress constitutive equation and we'll uh, we'll do something interesting so trace of uh, this whole term trace of del uh, trace of lambda del dot v i will be equal del dot v is nothing but a scalar and i is identity tensor which means 0 in the non diagonal terms and 1 in the diagonal so trace will be nothing but 3 multiplied by lambda into del dot v lambda into del dot v plus now uh, trace of this term means trace of when you add these two you will get this matrix what will be the trace of it trace is the trace means you just add up all the diagonal terms right so these are the diagonal terms so this is nothing but 2 multiplied by del dot v this this plus this plus this so dou v x dou x plus dou v y dou y plus dou v z dou z that is del dot v so 2 multiplied by del dot v multiplied by mu so 2 mu del dot v so 3 lambda into 3 lambda plus 2 mu you can take del dot v out you will get a trace you will get as this equation now what we will do is that we will I'll again write out the uh, equation, the stress constitutive equation. So, stress, stress constitutive equation is equal to tau is equal to uh, 
lambda into del dot v i plus mu del v plus del v transpose so this is the uh, stress constitutive equation right what we'll do is that we'll take uh, one third of trace of stress and we'll divide we'll divide tau into two parts An isotropic part and a deviatoric part this is something we usually do in uh, fluid mechanics so if i do that so this part so one third of uh, we'll use the fact that uh, one third of trace one third of trace will be used here one third of trace will be why one third of trace trace is the sum of diagonal terms so there are three diagonal terms so one third of trace will be the average of uh, diagonals so this is the trace here right so one third of trace will be uh, lambda three lambda means two by three mu into 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 del dot v by this is the one third of trace multiplied by identity tensor now you can see that this is similar to this term but uh, two third of mu multiplied by del dot v identity is added here since that is added here we have to subtract the same thing here to make the equation uh, consistent so this is uh, equal to uh, u multiplied by del v plus del v transpose minus 2 by 3 del dot we are subtracting this to make sure that uh, this addition is cancelled out so this is same equation but we made a slight change same stress uh, stress constitutive equation now this uh, this part lambda plus two third of mu is known as uh, we'll call it mu dash popularly known as second viscosity we'll call it mu dash so now stress constitutive equation can be written as mu mu grad v plus grad v transpose minus 2 by 3 uh, del dot v i this part plus now the second viscosity multiplied by del dot v i Uh, this usually the second visco <coughs> second viscosity part can be neglected now uh, actually we have already come up with the uh, we already have the uh, navier stokes equation with us we can write down now we can write out the most general form of navier stokes equation so what was our uh, uh, 
the stress uh, equation be the force resultant equation. Yeah, rho. Rho dv dt equal to this is the uh, this is the Navier Navier Strauss equation in an early form. We'll call it Cauchy's momentum equation. We'll replace uh, tau with the tau we have just derived to get the most general form of Navier Strauss equation. We'll replace uh, that tau with this tau here. Let's actually get rid of this uh, this part, last part. So for that, what we'll do is that we'll define p p bar as uh, p minus p minus mu dash del dot v. We'll use p bar here. Right? This part can be neglected. But uh, let's define P bar and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll subsume this part with the pressure. Uh, this is actually the, this is uh, the difference between uh, the quantity called thermodynamic pressure and mechanical pressure. The difference comes from, uh, difference of these two quantities arises because of second viscosity. So if you do that, Uh, we'll get the most general form of uh, Navier-Stokes equation as as uh, rho dv dt equal to minus grad or del p bar plus del dot tau will be replaced by the equation we have just written. What is that? P del v plus del V transpose minus 2 by 3 del dot V I this is the stress equation this plus Rho G. Okay, I think I did not write rho there. Na. Rho G. This is the body force per unit volume. Okay. Body force per unit volume. So you need to multiply it with rho there. Otherwise, you will not get it. This is uh, one of the most general form of form of Navier Stokes equation. In CFD, this is the equation we usually, very usually solve. Uh, now we, we can actually make it a little smaller. Here, uh, del dot, del dot v, del dot. del dot v multiplied by i there right that can be that can actually be written as uh, del del dot v you can actually verify this this is very simple del dot del dot v multiplied by i is i is identity tensor uh, This is a segment del dot V is a, uh, a trace, right? Sum of diagonal terms uh, multiplied by the, the gradient of it. This is uh, this is something you can verify. So I'll not write it here. So this can be written that way. Also, uh, this this term here del V. Uh, 
del V transpose del dot del V transpose or del can can also be written as del del dot V. This can also be verified easily. Uh, you can multiply it out to verify it. I'll not verify it right now. So if you do that, you'll get uh, equation as uh, rho dv dt equal to minus grad p bar plus mu into first term del dot del v means del square v del square v plus now these two are same, right? These two are same. So 1 minus 2 by 3 will be 1 by 3. 1 by 3 mu multiplied by uh, del del dot v. Del del dot v. Plus rho g bar. Again, one of the most general form of uh, Navier-Stokes equation. So here, uh, <coughs> so if uh, fluid is incompressible, what happens? If fluid is incompressible, then del dot V becomes zero. Del dot V is the mass conservation, right? Not mass conservation, the del dot V is equal to zero is the mass conservation equation for incompressible fluid. That becomes zero. So for... Uh, uh, so I'll just expand total derivative is equal to dou do v dot t plus rho v dot del rho v dot del v equal to minus grad p plus mu del square v plus rho g. So these terms become zero because of uh, someone messaged me. Okay, I'll, I'll conclude right now. Okay. I'll just, uh, so this is the variation, variation in uh, space, right? A variation in time. This is the convection part. The pressure gradient. This is the diffusion part. And this is the body force part. So this one is the most general form of the Navier-Stokes equation and if uh, fluid is incompressible this will be your uh, equation. Yeah, I think I'll stop here right now.